And now finally, with our 7.4 gigs of remaining space, we'll create one last partition. I don't like to use all of the remaining space ever, so I'll just trim that back to the nearest gigabyte. And we'll make our data partition of 7 gigabytes. Again, and this is also a logical. At the beginning of the empty space is correct again. Now this one will change the mount point to call it slash. So we'll go down here to enter manually and we'll change that to data. And this will be our standard on all machines. And we don't need to change any of You do want ext3 file system. We will not set a bootable flag on this one. So all the rest of the options are correct. And we're done with that partition. So that, that is how we want to set up this initial Ubuntu server. Let's select finish partitioning and write changes to disk. Now we're given a summary of everything that's going to be performed and we manually select yes, write changes to disks and proceed. The partitioner is now creating partitions and formatting them. Files are now being copied for the installation. So the first pass of copying files put in our system and now we choose the software we want to install. We decided that we were going to run DNS on a separate piece of hardware so we won't install that on this server but we will install the LAMP stack. LAMP's, LAMP stands for Linux, Apache, MySQL and PHP. Of course Linux is our Ubuntu. We want the Apache, the MySQL and the PHP. We will possibly do some work in PHP however when we're working with MySQL and Apache in this project we're going to be using the Perl programming language. We're definitely going to do some interesting and powerful things using the Postfix mail server, so we want that. We do want security wherever possible, so we do want the OpenSSH server. We do not want PostgreSQL. We'll be working exclusively in MySQL. The Samba file server? It's possible we might want to serve files to Windows machines, but for now, we'll leave that off. To get started with MySQL, you need to assign a password for the MySQL root user. Regarding the initial configuration of the Postfix MTA or mail server, we will go ahead and choose this wizard's selection of internet site. That'll be sufficient to get started. Taking the default value of the hostname of Core as the system mail name will work for now. You know your installation is almost complete when you reach the point of installing the Grub bootloader. The installer is complete and we're asked to remove the CD-ROM and restart the machine. What we're going to do in this step is we're going to go into the BIOS settings and then set our order of boot devices back to something standard. We want removable devices first. 
meaning the floppy drive. Then we want the hard drive second. CD-ROM should come after floppy, then hard drive in production use. Save changes. Now the machine will boot up into Ubuntu server for the first time. We should see grub start first. Now Linux is starting. That was a pretty fast boot up. Here's our first login prompt. We'll log in with our regular user, Electric. Root cannot log in yet. One of the first things we want to do with our regular user who has pseudo privileges is issue a pseudo password root and set the password for root. Then we'll be able to log in as root if we choose to. And there we are, our brand new Ubuntu server 8.04.3.